hope everyone's doing well welcome back to another video so yesterday i told you guys i'm going to make a small video on data collection and journaling right so this is that video um i've decided i'm going to split it up into two smaller videos even where we can go over journaling and data collection separately so this one is going to be about journaling right so as you guys can see i've prepared you know this small table here and in this table you know we have some details and some more that we're actually going to add right but it's quite basic right it's some of the things you would expect to see in a trading journal to pair your trading of course for me it's fairly consistent it's going to be euro usd the bias was it a long was it a short the result percent wise because your percentage in a trade can differ depending on your partials and you know other factors the actual result r wise you know the percent you risk versus the r you gain can be different in my case pretty consistent because one percent is usually one r the entry time the exit time i've based it off the five minute candle so it's always going to be an even number pips one the sl and of course the day that the trade was taken on so this trade here was actually a long as well i'm just creating the options so now these are these are some of the very basic things we can include in the journal right and with notion this is why i've told everyone to get notion we can actually export this into something called a csv file which can be opened on excel and now on excel right the whole point of journaling right is it is a form of data collection and i honestly i haven't done enough of that i wish i'd done more throughout 2022 it's a very very good habit to pick up and i know a lot of you probably do not do it yet so now is a great time to start because i know a lot of you are planning to start on demos this year and then of course hopefully planning to go live now at the start of my journey i was quite stubborn i didn't journal properly and then i started journaling very basically to an extent right just getting a notepad just scribbling and just getting down random bits of information then i tried excel and even then i wasn't very consistent now here's the thing with notion this is why i like notion we have all this basic information right it's great you can add in potentially you know let's say a new text and we'll say this is going to be you know what, actually we can make it into a drop down this is going to be the month that we took trades in now why is that important so imagine i put this on excel <clears throat> on excel is very easy to filter things what you can then do is take all the data oh what was my overall r in january you know how much did i win how much did i lose how many trades did i take anything and we'll get into why that you know data matters in a second but having all these separate you know sections all these important things they all matter when you look back at this data it's going to be important and you know notion is very good for letting you do this because you can add a lot of variables and it's very easy to get around now cool so this is all nice right all these little headings important things cool what we can also do is then do something like this on notion you know all these details are already recorded we can then add a picture so i've got my euro usd open or my trading view right now as you guys can see right i've got trader ignore this trade this is a different trade for those of you that don't know what you can do is go up here to the camera icon there's a way to do it on the phone as well you can click this you can either copy it or save the image and of course i just copy them come over to notion paste it very simple right and on my chart very evidently as you guys can see i you know i don't always have this indicator on but if i am recording something of course i'm gonna have my indicator on it makes it so easy to realize where did i take the trade what went wrong you know what went well whatever copy and paste that where's my daily bias bias am i taking trades in line with it you should be cool now here is some basic reasoning the rest the reason i've kept it very simple is because you know the chart explains itself you can see clearly a lot of the days put in probable area you know we're taking a long we ote we take this whole range price comes to discount we enter off the first five minute fair value gap so 
as I said, entry of the five minute fair value gap, and then what's our target? The previous daily high, which was this high over here. Now, this trade that I'm showing you guys is forged. It's not real. This is based on last Friday's price action. It's just an example. If, right, we take a loss instead, of course, it will be recorded. But what I think is very important for you guys to, you know, record and write down why is the stop loss taken right so in this example daily bias bullish call cool, good was it a long yes we were taking a long why did we take a long because from here this low to this high we delivered roughly 66 pips i think it is right so to this high 66 or 60 pips right so what what would i expect for new york being logical I would expect a retracement and then of course a move higher to complete the ADR. Now that move did actually come, but it came in the London close kill zone because as you guys can see, London close kill zone, we came down, we took this south side, then we delivered straight up to this buy side, right? Over here. And of course, price went up to there. This was actually recorded in here as well. This was my reasoning. This is actually what played out. The reason we got taken out was due to offset accumulation. As you guys can see, this low over here took out my stop loss. We actually took this sell side and then delivered to buy side via this high over here. So it's very important to know where you went wrong and understand your own logic and reason behind this trade. Now, was I wrong in taking this trade? No, I had very logical sound reasoning behind taking this trade. That is fine. Did my stop loss get hit? Yeah, that's fine. That happens in trading. You're not going to win every trade, right? But understanding why your stop loss is being taken. Because now imagine this happens two or three more times. What have I learned? I'm getting turned into offset accumulation or offset distribution more than once. So what does that mean? When I'm near or in a kill zone, I need to wait for a sweep of liquidity before I trade. I've taught you guys that, right? But in this example... Did I wait for it? No. Did I still have logical reasoning behind what I was doing? Yes, that's fine. But if it's, you know, repeating behavior and I'm taking repeating losses, then what can we do with this journal? Very simply, go back over the losses you've taken, look at your charts and, you know, you can read your own reasoning and see what's going wrong. And I feel that like notion makes it very easy to trap because, I, you know, I told you guys, I've tried it on paper, of course, paper, fine. It's whatever you're writing down at the time on excel cool now you've got a bunch of numbers and headings similar to this table but you don't have a visual representation of the trade on notion you can add this you know i'm just copy pasting the chart but it's very simple especially me somebody might look at this chart and not understand what happened but me myself when i took the trade i will remember what happened in this trade right so therefore i'm able to write down my reasoning whether it is a win or loss regardless now the reason i added you know this extra time aspect you know in january the month the days, whatever. This is very important. This is data you can look back on. So this what this is what I was talking about. After we collect data, you know, for months, for a year, let's say, right? At the end of 2023, getting into 2024. What can you look back? You know, you can look back, okay, June was my most profitable month. Um, January was my worst trading month. Um I took the most trades in X, took the most trades in, you know. You build that data on yourself, your own behaviours perhaps, and you know there's going to be external factors. Maybe you didn't take a lot of trades in May because you were moving houses or something, I don't know. And that's fine, right? And you can you can make a mental note of that or even a physical note and put that into your data because it might cause discrepancies. But overall, you want to be very consistent with this data collection, this journaling, right? Because when you look back, the main thing, right, is refinements and improvement as traders. We want to get better. We want to look at what we're doing and we want to improve it. How's that going to happen? You see where you're losing and you try to stop that, especially, like I said before, if there's repeating behavior. This is you know, a very easy way. If you're tracking everything, it is very easy to then go back, see where you're losing and work on it. Okay, cool. I'm always losing trades in New York kill zone. Okay, that's fine. Maybe I shouldn't be entering in New York kill zone, right? I win 80% of the trades I take in London open kill zone, right? But I'll only win 40% in New York kill zone. What's the logical step to take? Start only trading London, right? 
And then what can you do with your data? Okay, if I got rid of all my New York trades and I only took my London trades, where do I, where do I end up overall? You know, where's my overall R percentage, whatever, right? There's a lot of ways to look at this data. It's very dynamic. And, you know, of course, in the future, I will get into you other ways other ways we can turn it into charts and whatnot how we can play around this um with this data um but yeah that's the main thing i i just want everyone to journal i think it's very important it's something i wish i had picked up earlier properly i started doing you know with a lot more efficacy and efficiency but this year i will be and um i will share this template with you guys so it's easy you don't have to make one from scratch but if there is any questions, of course, just let me know and we can go through it.